Press Council of India brings out guidelines from time to time for the newspapers and journalists so that they can adhere to them and maintain ethics in practice. The Press Council of India norms of journalistic code is one such moral guidelines for the press in India. Among the many suggestions to the press are regarding accuracy and fairness. The Press Council of India quote asks newspapers to desist from publication of inaccurate, baseless, graceless, misleading or distorted material. Regarding advertisements, the court directs newspapers to clearly distinguish an advertisement from news content. The court cautions against defamatory writings and asks publications not to write anything which is defamatory unless there is sufficient evidence. Further, it asks the press to desist from using caste, religion or community references in their reporting unless and until it is absolutely necessary. On paid news, the Press Council of India court directs the newspapers to specifically mention any item which is paid for from other news items. The Press Council of India court also directs publications to acknowledge whenever using others work and that plagiarism is to be avoided. On right to privacy, the Press Council of India court expects journalists to respect the privacy of an individual and that it should not be intruded or embedded unless it is outweighed by genuine overriding public interest. While covering communal disputes or classes, journalists are expected to maintain balance between freedom of free speech and responsibility for maintaining harmony in society. On investigative journalism, the Press Council of India court lays down the norms and parameters with specific do's and don'ts for investigative journalism. The Press Council of India court also calls for abiding obscenity and vulgarity in newspapers. According to the court, newspapers should not publish anything which is obscene, vulgar or offensive to public good taste. It asks journalists to respect confidentiality of confidential sources from whom information has been received. The Press Council of India cannot compel the journalist to reveal such sources. The court also asks newspapers not to pass on or elevate conjecture, speculation or comment as a statement of fact and that all these categories should be distinctly identified. For factual error corrections and apologies should be published in the same edition of the newspaper. As per the Press Council of India court, the editor while writing editorials should not transgress the law and violate the norms of journalism. According to it, the editorial comments and views published in the newspaper should be in sober, dignified and socially acceptable language. The Press Council of India also issues guidelines on specific issues like financial reporting and election reporting. The court also has guidelines for the press regarding protection of child rights. It further recommends good practices in journalism and states that a mistake of inconspicuous nature is not a violation of code of conduct of journalism. It requests editors to keep erasers and not to hesitate in using them when an error is pointed out. Self-regulation as a concept of the press is not a very old concept. In Western liberal democratic countries, the concern for self-regulation emerged in the early 20th century due to phenomenal rise in circulation of newspapers on the one hand and the unethical practices in the name of competition on the other hand. In India, as we have already seen, the concern for self-regulation came after the independence of the country. On many occasions, it has been found that the media including the press has been used for propagating hatred and contributing to violence. If we take the example of Rwanda, where radio was used for propagating hatred, then we will find that the radio contributed towards the large scale violence against a particular ethnic group. Such examples can also be found in many other countries. India being a diverse country with lot of social and economic inequality, the press ought to play a major role in maintaining harmony in the society. Self-regulation of the press has a host of challenges. Among the various challenges includes the non-state actors. We have seen on various occasions how non-state actors try to enforce regulation over the press. And on many occasions, they have also been found to indulge 
in physical violence for enforcing their regulation. Commercial interests on many occasions overrides journalistic principles. In the same way, personal interests might also override journalistic principles. In the same vein, executive challenges as the one seen during the emergency when the Press Council Act was repelled and the Press Council of India was disbanded poses another challenge for press self-regulation in India. Even though such events are not regular, but still one has to remember the, those dark days so that those mistakes are not repeated. The existence of Press Council of India since its formation in 1966 shows that self-regulation is possible with strong ethical foundations of the press. New self-regulatory mechanisms are evolving for other media in India and in those mechanisms we can see a reflection of the ways in which the Press Council of India works and the various guidelines of the Press Council of India. Here we have seen how the Press Council of India from time to time issues ethical guidelines and code of conduct for the press in India to deal with moral dilemmas on a daily basis. At the same time, we have also seen how the emerging self-regulatory mechanism in India is impacted by the work of the Press Council of India. At the same time, we also briefly saw the emergence of self-regulatory mechanism in India and in other parts of the world with the dangers to it. In this lecture, we have seen the setting up of the Press Council of India and the various challenges through which it had to go through. And at the same time, we have also seen the various functions that the Press Council of India carries out. We have also gone briefly through the powers of the Press Council of India and how it uses those powers. At the same time, we have seen the guidelines that it issues from time to time to the press so that it can deal with the moral dilemmas. In this lecture, we also briefly discussed about the dangers that self-regulation encounters and how self-regulation is a constantly evolving phenomenon. And in India, the self-regulation mechanism which is evolving is impacted by the Press Council of India and its works. The lecture also touched upon the various guidelines issued by the Press Council of India from time to time with a focus on norms of journalistic court. The lecture further looked at the background of media self-regulation and the various dangers that media self-regulation encounters from time to time. Hope you enjoyed this lecture. See you. Thank you.